Leave it to you, Melba. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening 
see you, Kiaja. And Bella. God bless you, Pastor Q. While you all are coming, please like, tag, share, and invite others to come and be a part of this teaching. God bless you, Wanda. It's good to see you tonight. Good evening to you, Bridget. Good to see you. We are well. How are you? God bless you, Pastor Swan. Good to see you. Please like, tag, share, invite those things that we generally do when we come on live to hear a word or otherwise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Good evening to you, Sharika. Good to see you. Good evening, Sister Williams. Good to see you tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight and um, share what God has shared with me for tonight. If you would go ahead and turn with me to Psalm chapter, I'm sorry, Psalm chapter 102. That's going to be our foundational scripture tonight as I go to God in prayer. And then we'll look at where we're going to be for the remainder of the evening. Um, Psalm, Psalm chapter 12. I'm sorry. Psalm chapter 102. Psalm chapter 102. Good evening to you, Carol. Good to see you. To anyone else that I may have missed or have chosen not to speak in the comments, good evening to you. And thank you for being a part of Holistic Restoration Ministries journey called life bible study let us look to the lord god we love you tonight and we bless you and we thank you and we just ask god that you would show up tonight in a mighty way we plead the blood of jesus over the adversary and we command him to be still tonight on this live and in our lives in jesus name we command that the enemy that is speaking to the ears of the saints that his voice would be silenced we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that this word tonight will go forth with strength and with power. I plead the blood of Jesus over my own life and my own thought processes, God, that I may think clearly, hear clearly, and speak clearly, that your people might be edified, that when we leave here tonight, God, we may be better than we were when we came. <clears throat> we pray that your anointing would rise tonight like it has not done in times past. And we pray that your spirit of influence would ride on my word that your people might be healed, delivered, and set free in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen to God be the glory. Tonight we are in lesson two, or session two, as it were, of our new series, The Mystery of Times and Seasons. The foundational scripture that I want to use tonight from Psalms 102 and 13. Psalms 102 and 13 says this, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Amen. This is what the word of God says. Good evening to you, Sister Hazel. The word of God says that you will arise and have mercy on Zion 
for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Tonight, I want to continue talking about the mystery of times and seasons, and I want to really deal with tonight the set time. We talked about last week that a set time is, is Cairo's time. It is quantitative time. It is the appointed time for the purpose of God to be established, manifested, and brought forth in the earth. God says tonight that we need to recognize that we are in our set time. That means that some of us have been praying to God for a very, very long time for certain things to manifest in our lives, to manifest in our ministries, to manifest for our children, and we've been waiting. God says, but now is the time for him to favor Zion and that your set time is now. Amen. We ought to be excited about that. We ought to be shouting about that. We ought to bless God that we have finally come to the end of a season and the beginning of another season where God says now is the time that you've been fighting enough, that you've been fasting enough, that you've been going through enough. It's like you've been beating your head against the wall enough, but God says that now is the set time. This is the mystery of times and seasons that in order for us to get through a season we first got to go through time in order for us to get to the place of abundance and blessings we've got to go through this thing called time in order for us to be prepared to live in and in to live in and receive from this abundance that we're asking god for then we've got to learn how to first go through time so that we can get to the season. God bless you, Sister Iris. Good to see you. I missed you in my last trip to Georgia. God wants us to know that our time has not gone unnoticed. Are you with me? Remember last week we talked about how times and seasons govern everything that we do in the earth. We don't do anything by happenstance. We don't just stumble upon anything. Remember the boys that were locked in jail, Paul and Silas, Bible Silas, the word of God says that at midnight, suddenly, but can I say to you that the boys had to go through a season of being locked up. They had to go through a season of trial. They had to go through a season of being disregarded, disliked, lied on, all of that for the sake of Jesus before they got to the season of suddenly. None of us can get to our places of immediate or sudden change until we go through time. Remember, we talked about that God is eternal. God operates outside of time, but God honors time so that he can quantify time to our human existence. Our human existence is quantified by dates and times and years and seasons. Don't be dismayed when your time seems to be going on and on and on and nothing is happening in your life. I'm getting to the message in just a minute. Don't, don't be dismayed when it seems like day after day you're in the same struggle. Because can I admonish unto you after a while, your set time will come. A woman is not pregnant always. Are you understanding? We don't go through things always. There comes a time where God has put a pen in it on our journey called life. And he says, this is the time. This is the time he said in his word that I'm going to favor Zion for her set time has come. Can we bless God because our set time has come? It don't look like much. It may not feel like much. It may not feel any differently, but the Lord would have for me to prophesy to you tonight that this is the season of your set time. How do I then walk into my set time when you align with the things of God? When your life aligns to the will of God, then God prepares for you a set time. Are you understanding? When you don't align with God, this is when you will find yourself going through the same thing year after year. We call those generational curses. And we, 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 we almost like we're on the treadmill walking four and five miles, but we're not going anywhere. God says it's time to get off of that treadmill of walking but not going anywhere. It's time to get off of that, that thing where you think the time just owe you something. And it's time for you to align yourself with the will of God because so many people are missing what God has along their journey called life because they're not moving in the timing of God. They're not moving. 
not moving in the will, excuse me, not moving in the will of God, and we're wanting the promises of God. Always remember, salvation is free, but there, there are processes and precepts that we have to live by in order for the will of God to come to pass in our lives. I wanted to set that foundation before we move, move over into the meat of the word tonight. This is what I want you to remember throughout this entire series. Remember these four words. Years can eat years. Can you say that? Can you type that tonight? Years can eat years. And a lot of us, myself included, have allowed the years of our lives to eat up the years of our lives. And now we're at a point where we're looking at God like, now what? God told us to do a thing. God gave us a vision for a thing. And we kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And now, 10 years later, your years have eaten up your years. God told you to start a business. And yeah, I know I'm, I, you know, I can, I can, I can do hair. I know I'm good at calligraphy. You're good at all these things. God said, start this thing. I want you to do this thing. I can work on cars. God said, do this thing. And 15 years later, you have allowed your years to eat up your years. God said, start this ministry. It's not going to be what everybody else is doing. It's not going to be the same way everybody else is doing. He said, but I need you to start it. And 20 years later, we have allowed our years to eat up our years. And we're wondering why it seems like we're having to work so hard for things to be. Because we're moving outside of the timing of God. Moving outside of the set time of God. And we're wanting God to do what he asked us to do 30 years ago. Is anybody beside myself guilty of allowing years to eat up years? And you look back and you think, God, how can I get that back? We're going to talk about the mystery of times and seasons. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. Beginning at verse number one through verse eight, and then we're going to look at 25 through 32. It is God's desire. We saw last week in the book of Joel. It is God's desire to redeem our time. It is God's desire to give us another opportunity to get back the years that we gave away. The reality is, and we'll talk about that later in the series, our lives are divided into four compartments. One through ages 1 through 25, 26 through 50, 51 through 75, and 76 to 100. Within these processes of time, God has set times and seasons within those times that we're supposed to get things done. And the, re the harsh reality is so many people spent the first quarter, the first 25 years of the game called life, out there doing whatever, however, whenever, and we lost a lot of time. Is that anybody's testimony? We were out there, people out there in the club, they were getting high, they were getting drunk, they were doing all of playing church. They were doing all of these things for the first 25 to 30 years of their lives, and then all of a sudden the light bulb came on and said, hey, look, I'm getting older. But we never went back and asked God, can I redeem? Is there a way for me to redeem what I missed? Those first 30 years? <laughs> Is there a way for me to redeem the time and the hours that I spent sleeping in the club, that I spent uh, fornicating, that I spent committing adultery, that I spent drinking and drunk? Is there time? <clears throat> How can I redeem that time? This is the mystery of times and seasons. Where God says, I want to restore to you, according to Joel, he says, the second chapter, he says, I want to restore to you the years that the canker worm ate. I want to restore to you the years that the palmer were not stuff. He said, I want to give you years. I want to redeem the time because there were things and people that you and I both were supposed to reach and we did not because our minds were in other places and we let our years eat our years. And now God is saying, I need you to make up the time. Genesis chapter 41. We know the story. Beginning in verse number one says, Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. 
and behold, he stood by the river. Suddenly, there came up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the meadow. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the water, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. I'm going to stop as I go along so that when I'm done, I'm done. The first, I want to talk about those first three verses. The first thing I want to say is this. God spoke to Pharaoh by way of dream. God speaks to us by way of dreams oftentimes because sometimes we're so busy throughout the day that we don't hear God. But what has always intrigued me about this is Pharaoh was not a saved man. Pharaoh never claimed to know God as Savior. He never claimed to know the God of the Israelite children. But God spoke to Pharaoh. And I often wondered if God spoke to Pharaoh because everybody else who should have been listening to God had their ear to somewhere else. I wonder if everybody's ear who was supposed to be sanctified and tuned to the heart and the voice of God missed what God was saying. So God had to deal with an unsaved, unrighteous man. I wonder was God doing that to remind us that the church does not have a monopoly on who God speaks to. That the church cannot say that because you're not saved, because you're Muslim, because you're Baha'i, <coughs> because of whatever your faith is, that God won't speak to you, that our God won't speak. Can I say to you that our God, because he is the God of the universe, that he can speak to whomever he wants to, whenever he wants to, to do whatever he wants them to do? Us being saved does not mean that God won't speak to our unsaved spouses. Us being saved does not mean that God won't speak to our unsaved children or co-workers. God spoke to Pharaoh. Think about that. <clears throat> God spoke to Pharaoh. And there were other righteous people in the land, but he spoke to an unrighteous man. Question, I wonder how many unsaved people have a word from God, but we have turned our ear from them because we say they don't know God the way we do. I'm talking about times and seasons. And when we disregard the unsaved man as not having a word from God, then we become the ones that have our foot on their neck. We become the ones that cause them not to want to come into the house of God. We become the ones that push them out further from their time and their season because we <coughs> are trying to play <coughs> a role that does not belong to us. Are you with me? The word of God says that, that it came to pass that at the end of these two years, now these two years, but it's talking about the time that the um the baker and the candle the, the baker and the servant of uh pharaoh were out of prison you know joseph had interpreted this dream and they promised joseph that when we get back in right standing with pharaoh then we are going to need some then we are going to <coughs> remember you but they did not two years later and they had not remembered can i say to you thanks to god that it doesn't matter thank you that it doesn't matter how long someone forgets you that God will cause them to remember. It doesn't matter how long. <coughs> it doesn't matter <clears throat> how long your time or your season of waiting, God will send somebody to come and see about you. I want to explain to you tonight, and I want to encourage you that it is not over yet. What God wants you to do in the earth whether your pastor speaks it into your life, whether your apostle speaks it into your life or not, God will send somebody during a set time, during the right season to speak into your life so that your baby can jump. So that that thing that has been lying dormant and dead in your life for all of these years can begin to speak. So that that word that God wants to get in the earth can come alive. It doesn't matter who God uses. The important thing is that God uses somebody. So the word says this, that, that he came 
the Pharaoh had this dream. And in the dream, there were seven fat cows and there were seven lean cows. The word talks about how these seven fat cows were eating and they were doing well. But then what struck me as strange, in verse 3, it says, Then behold, seven cows came up after them out of the river, ugly, gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the banks of the river. I thought about that thing, that the bad cows stood beside the good cows almost like the famine was watching to see when the time of plenty was over. Are you with me? My God from Zion. Like the, the what is coming next was standing beside what is to see if we're going to even recognize that what is coming is bringing a letter to us based on what is. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is so many of us are so concerned about right now that we're not looking at what's coming down the road. God bless you, Prophet Reagan. So many of us also are so consumed with the right now that we don't even recognize with every passing day, time is bringing us a letter to let us know that old age is coming. We are living like every day does not matter, that nothing counts. While all the while these fat cows were eating and they were doing well, but the word of God says that these skinny, sick, ugly looking cows were standing right beside them. Face of God, what are we missing that's standing right beside us? My God from Zion. What are we missing? What 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 is God sending to us by word of the prophet, by word of our leaders, by word of just people in the street? That something is standing, something is coming, and it is standing right beside us, and we have not even been able to see that it's coming. My God from Zion. The good years. <clears throat> were standing beside the bad years, and the good years did not even know that the bad years were there. My God. The good health was standing right beside the bad health, and the good health never even knew that the bad health was right there. Life was standing right, bless your name, God, life was standing right beside death, and life never knew that death was right there. Isn't that amazing that in that scripture, <coughs> God reveals a truth that we can be so blinded by how well we are eating now that we can't see that something else is coming. My God from Zion. Verse 4 says this. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh woke up. So God showed Pharaoh this dream and it startled him so much that he was shaken out of his sleep. In other words, God is saying that we have come to the time where you need to wake up. Bless your name, Jesus. We have come to the time where it's no longer safe for you to be asleep because God is warning you even in your sleep. So we have come to the place in time where we need to be careful, the word of God says, how we sleep when God is speaking. Because God is using all kinds of things to speak to us in the earth and we are asleep. We are like those good cows grazing and not paying attention to what's coming. And all the while, every day, we're getting more and more understanding of what's coming, and we're not even reading the mail. We're not even paying attention. We're not even hearing what God is saying. We're putting all of our dreams off as nothing. Can I say to you that every dream has a meaning? Every dream has a meaning, and if God grants you a dream and you cannot remember it, it is because the enemy is trying to snatch it from you. He doesn't want you to remember it. Oftentimes in our dreams, God is trying to warn us about things that are to come. And sometimes he's even trying to encourage us to hold on a little while longer. Are you understanding? This is the mystery of times and seasons. And some of us have lost time in our dreams over foolish things. When you're having a dream and you somebody invites you to dinner and you start eating in the dream, you need to understand it's a witch somewhere trying to feed you something that God don't want you to eat. You need to get up and rebuke that dream. When God shows you in a dream about wartime or something coming, you need to get up and you need to rebuke what's not of God and ask God to show me, God, what part of this dream is of you. <coughs> even, <coughs> even the unsaved 
man got startled enough in his dream. The word of God said that it woke him up. What's wrong that the church has not been awakened? What's wrong that everything is going on in the earth in time and the church has not been awakened? We're so concerned about things that don't make any difference. We're so concerned about your feelings being hurt. You're so concerned about insignificant, mundane, mute things. And we're allowing time to slip by and people are slipping into comas in the church. People are sleeping, slipping into comas in the house of God. And when a strong word comes through to wake you up, all of a sudden you are offended. But I'm hearing the word of God says that we're going to be offended because of him. My God from Zion. Do you understand that just because you're in the season of life where God wants you to be, that people are going to be offended by where you are? They're going to be offended because they don't want to hear what you have to say. Because their flesh is going to be angry with what God is trying to do in the earth. This is times, of, the mystery of times and seasons. That people can be silent year after year and watch how the enemy is trying to infiltrate the house of God from the inside out. And the moment that God sends a voice, John, you know, the voice of one cried in the wilderness, Make way the, the, the way of the Lord. Make ready the way of the Lord. When God sends someone with a clarion voice, we can't hear that because we hear through the spirit of offense. Thanks to God, this is the mystery of times and seasons. Good evening to my cousin Corinne. Good to see you. This is the mystery of times and seasons. And we are missing time in the kingdom of God, doing the will of God in the earth. Because we're having to backtrack and burp babies who should be grown by now. We're having to backtrack and see, are you okay? We're having to backtrack when God is saying, this is the mystery of time, is that you can't always go back and fix a thing. You got to keep moving forward. I say it holistic. And let me be honest, I am a hard leader. And I'm a hard leader because like the sons of Issachar, I discern the time. Are you hearing me? The word of God says that he does nothing in the earth except he reveals it to his apostles and his prophets first. So when we're coming to you and we're dealing with you out of a sense of urgency, we're not doing that because we want to. We're doing that because we want to let you know you are getting ready to miss your set time. And all those seasons come around again. Sometimes some of us will never meet the same season again. And if we can get you to a point where you stop letting your flesh be heard about everything and hear what I'm saying in the spirit, then we can grow and we can do something. But because we've been infantile in our time, because we have not kept mark with our time, because we're not busy about the things of God with our time, we are asleep in the house of God. And like any baby, when you wake up when they're asleep, they get angry. Oh, God. The word of God says that this dream troubled Pharaoh and it woke him. That's how I need some more tissue. Please. It woke him. Then the word of God in verse 5 says he slept again and dreamed a second time. And suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seven thin heads. Thank you. Then the whole seven thin heads, blight by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Listen, saints of God. Blight means detrimental effect. Blight means a, a bad deterioration. So you had seven ears of plump good corn. And seven ears of corn that were deteriorated. They were on the air. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about the mystery of times and seasons. These corn, these ears of corn were on the stalk, looking like they were receiving nutrients from the stalk that it was connected to, looking like it was receiving from the vine that it was connected to, but the stalk was sick. The stalk had detrimental defect. The stalk came along the word of God said and it devoured the good corn 
my God from Zion, how many people that are good ears of corn are sitting in the house of God, receiving from the table that God allows the angel of the house to set. But because there are some bad ears, the good ones are being devoured. Y'all don't have to shout me down while I'm preaching good. I know I'm talking right tonight. Praise to God, this is the mystery of times and seasons. And churches get stuck in dead places. Churches get stuck in dead-end places because they have allowed the, the thin cows and they have allowed the thin ears of corn to come in and grow up among the other ripe cows and the other ripe ears. And these things have been set in motion to devour what God wants to do in the earth. This is the mystery. The mystery of times and seasons. This is why I say to you, God is outside of time. God is outside of all of this mess. This is God telling Pharaoh, I need you to explain to the believers, to those that would hear that there is something coming. But you have been so asleep. Your feelings have been so easily to get hurt. You have been in your flesh so much. <coughs> you have been angered <coughs> by things that mean nothing that you have been lulled to sleep in the house of God and I'm sounding the trumpet to wake you up and nobody is hearing it. The shofar is blowing and nobody is hearing it. The trumpet is sounding and nobody is hearing it because everybody is so sensitive to unnecessary things that you have missed both time and season. You have missed both times and seasons twice. Are you with me? Twice. God gave Pharaoh this dream and the word of God says that both times he woke up. Both times the word of God says that the sovereign God gave an unsaved man a dream and he woke up. If the unsaved man can wake up, what say we about a saved man? If the unsaved man, if the unsaved man can realize it's something to these dreams, what is it with the saved man? If the unsaved man can recognize, wait a minute, God is trying to tell me something and I'm missing it, so now I need some help. The word of God said this. Verse 8, now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. Can I tell you that time can cause your spirit to be troubled. My God from Zion. Oh, I know we want to shout about the fact that trouble don't last always, and I'm grateful that it doesn't. But what about those times when time causes trouble? Bless your name, Jesus. What happens when time causes trouble? When you didn't put all the time you can into a good relationship, and that relationship causes trouble. When you put all the time you can into a marriage and that marriage causes trouble. When you put all the time you can into a ministry and that ministry causes trouble. Into a job and the job causes trouble. The word of God says that his spirit was troubled. Time caused his spirit to be troubled. Thanks to God, we all ought to be troubled. We in the house of God, our spirit man should always, we should be troubled. Because we look around and the saints of God and the unsaved people are laughing at the church like what we do makes no difference. People out in the street faking the funk like they shouting, a drunk man shouting on the corner. They're making light of the things that are happening in the house of God. They're picking on folk being slain in the spirit. And the house of God is laughing just like the unsaved men is laughing when our spirit ought to be troubled. We ought to be troubled that the things of God mean nothing anymore. We ought to be troubled when the men and women of God can set up a bed in the house of God and do whatever they want to do and call it God. We ought to be troubled when foolishness is going on in the house of God and people cannot be healed, delivered, and set free because they're still asleep to the things of God, but we're not troubled. Our spirits aren't troubled about the things of God. We're missing our times and our seasons because our spirit is troubled by foolish things. We're not troubled that millions of souls are dying and going to hell every day. We're not troubled about folk coming to church and still fornicating. 
We're not troubled about folk coming to church and still committing adultery. We're not troubled by the fact that people don't financially support their ministries. We're not troubled by the fact that the people are okay with holding conversations about other folk leaders. We're not okay. We're not troubled by the things that ought to trouble us. And thanks to God, that's troubling to me. This is the mystery of times and seasons. And we're wondering, God, why are we missing our time? Why are we missing our season? Because you hadn't allowed your spirit to become troubled yet. You hadn't allowed the time you missed to trouble you enough. This is what I tell the saints in holistic. If you miss Egypt, if you miss the things you used to do, if you miss the taste of onions and garlic, you hadn't been gone long enough. You hadn't moved far enough away. If you miss the things you used to do, if you miss the fornication, if you miss the lies, if you miss the parking lot meeting, you have not moved far enough away from Egypt. If any of those small things will cause you to slip back into who you used to be time and time ago, then you have missed the point of time and season. The word of God says in the morning. Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for the magicians of Egypt. And all of Egypt's wise men and Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was no one who could interpret them for Pharaoh. Let me say this to you, saints of God. The world will go to where the world goes to try to get an answer figured out. The world will go to where the world knows to go to get the answer to a question. But can I say to you that even the world knows that when they have come to the end of themselves, how to find a true servant of the Most High God. I'm talking about times and seasons. They are looking for people whose ministry, whose witness, whose character has been time tested and they stood the test of time. The world is going to be looking for people who will not and have not bent their knee to the golden image. They are looking for people who know that my God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But if he does not bless your name, but if he does not deliver us, then he is still God. They are looking for people who has not served in the court of Babylon. The world is looking for people who is living what they're talking. The world is looking for folk who image looks like God, not just your talk. But your walk and everything about you is God. When people come to me and they need advice or whatever it is, the first thing they say to me is, Apostle, they say, I know your walk. That is one of the most humbling sentences anyone has ever said to me. They say, I know your walk. And I know you to be an upright woman. Face of God. If the world can't give that testimony about you, then what are you doing with your time in your season? I'm not talking about church folk because, see, it was church folk that killed Jesus. It was church folk that crucified, bless your name, that crucified our Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about you getting accolades. From folk that sit there in your congregation every Sunday, but they cut your throat as soon as you leave. I'm talking about the unsaved man on the street that knows nothing about you. But when you walk past them, they honor something on you and they respect who you are in him. They say, Apostle, whew. they say, I know your walk. And I know you to be an upright woman. And I know that you're not going to say anything to me that God has said to you. Say to God, this is the mystery of times and seasons. Why is it a mystery, Sharika? Because I have suffered greatly for such a testimony. In time, I have gone through more stuff than most folk ought to face in one lifetime. In time. But God has brought me to a set time. He's brought me to a season in my life where people honor the struggle that I've gone through in time. Are you hearing me, Pastor Swan? I have gotten to a place in life where people honor 
the scars that they don't even see based upon the things that I have had to endure in time. Understand, because time happens before season. And when I was 10 and I was going through, and when I was 12 and I was going through, and when I was 18 and I was going through, and when I was 24 and couldn't find anybody, and when I was 30 and having to do it by myself, and I was 40 and starting a new ministry alone, I was going through time and I was wondering, God, when are you going to show up for me? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I was switched from time to set time and my season began to be in bloom. Say to God, now is the time for Zion, he said, for us to be favored. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But you first got to go through time. You got to go through time in order for God to trust you with the season. So the word of God says he went to the magicians. The magicians didn't have the answer. He went to the wise men of the day. The wise men of the day did not have the answer. But the chief butler remembered Joseph. Bless your name. At the set time, somebody will remember you. Thank you, Jesus. At the set time, somebody will remember you. Joseph in prison for two years waiting on his season. And all of a sudden, it was time. Can I tell you that Joseph was not just in prison doing nothing? He wasn't just waiting on his season. He was working and he was doing that which God needed him to do until Pharaoh sent for Joseph. My God. God didn't even send for him. Pharaoh sent for him. The unsaved man sent for him. The word of God said Joseph fixed himself up, shaved himself, put a belt about himself, and he went before Pharaoh. Verse 25 says this. Then Pharaoh said to, I'm sorry, then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. This is the mystery of times and seasons. God was showing Pharaoh how the good year, how the so I'm sorry, how the bad years were going to eat up the good years. So much so that people were never going to remember that the good years ever were. My God. He said this. The seven good corn cows are seven years and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. And the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them, and the seven years of uh, or seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are, are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. God showed Pharaoh there is something coming. And if you don't abide your time, if you don't use time wisely, then years are going to eat years. If you don't use your time wisely, then time is going to eat time. And the next time that is coming is going to be so bad that you will not remember when you had a good time. Here is what the word of God says. Verse 31. So the plenty will not be known in the land because the famine following it for it will be very severe. This is what God is saying. You've got to learn the importance of time so that you won't allow time to eat up time. You have to know the time. You have to know the days in which we live. You have to know these things so that time will not eat up time. So that you won't waste time doing nothing. And then when the bad years show up, you forget what the good years were like. You all remember 2020, 21, when everybody was getting stimulus checks from the government or anybody who was getting them, everybody was loving it and enjoying it. And now in 23, when a dozen and a half of eggs cost $7 or $10 according to where you go, now all of a sudden, you can't remember the stimulus check. When gas went from $275 to $289 to $319 to $350, now all of a sudden, we can't remember the good times. 
because we have allowed time to eat up time. We've allowed years to eat up years, and we did not prepare in the year of plenty for the severe famine. Thanks to God, this is the mystery of times and seasons, that years can eat years. And God desires to restore. According to Joel chapter 2, verse 25, God says, I want to restore. And I want to restore the years, not the stuff, not the people, not the cars you lost, not the marriage. He said, I want to restore the year. Because. If you get the years back, I said last week, then you can get the stuff back. If you get the years back and you account your years unto wisdom, then God will give you the strategies on how to get your stuff back. In August of 22, God said these words to me. He said, we have four more years of plenty. Tell the saints to prepare for the lack. Say to God, this is what Job said. He said, shall we always receive good of the Lord and never evil? In other words, Job says, shall we always be on top and never on the bottom? Shall we always have it good and not sometimes experience the bad? Shall in our times and seasons, should, should we always have a good time? And God never allow us to have a bad time. This is why David said we've got to learn how to number our days so we can account our time unto wisdom. Here we are in the house of God telling our young children, 30 and under, oh, it's okay to go out there and have a good time. It's okay to go out there and live like you want to party like you want to. I did it. Thanks to God. That is immature thinking. <coughs> that is immature teaching. That's against the will of God. Then they end up spending wasted time <coughs> on a pole somewhere. They spend wasted time out in the club somewhere. They spend wasted time in a ministry that's not moving forward. They spend wasted time in a marriage that is not producing. And we're saying, oh, we just go out there. If you like it, I stop rooting. If you like it, I love it. Enjoy what enjoy your youth. Yeah. But what happens when 25 turns to 30? And 30 turns to 50. And 50 turns to 75, and they've not accomplished anything in their life because they took advice from somebody who did not know how to honor time and season. Am I saying that you cannot honor your youth? That is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying according to the written word of God, he requires us to number our days so that we may use that time unto wisdom. Joel 2 and 25, he says, I want, will restore, not may, not want to, not if. He says, I will restore the years. My God, I will restore the years. That I told you when you were 30 something and I told you that I wanted you to do X, Y, and Z, God says, I will restore the years. When you were 45 and I told you I wanted you to do something, he said, I will restore the years. This restoration take, takes faith like you would not believe. I'm talking about 70-year-old people walking around looking like they're 23. Because God is restoring the years. Whew. I know, I understand that there is a group of people that will not believe what I'm saying. But if God is no respecter of person and he favors no one above another, then how can God give Hezekiah 15 years, but he won't give it to me? How can God turn back the time for Hezekiah, but he won't do it for me? 
How can God redeem the time, but he won't redeem it for me? Bless your name, Jesus. This is the mystery of times and seasons. That some of us need to get on our face before God. And we need to ask him, God, show me where I missed it. That I might redeem the time. God, in this time, I'll use it for your glory. I don't want to get back the time so I can be the same kind of crazy and foolish I was then. God, I need you to redeem the time so that I can honor you with the time this time. So that I can be ready for my set time and my season this time. So that I can have all that you said for me and everything connected to me this time. Because if the truth be told, and as quiet as it's kept, a lot of us should have been further along down the road. A lot of us should have had other things in, in line and set up for our children and our grandchildren. A lot of us should have been doing so much more than we're doing now, but we let years eat. Yeah. This is the mystery of time and season. And God says he wants to give it back. If you slam it again, you're going to get in trouble. He says he wants to give it back. And he wants to teach us how to use our time wisely. Be like the men of Issachar, the word of God says, who knew the time. And they knew that the days were evil. My God. If they knew it then, what's wrong with us now? Joseph told Pharaoh, there are going to be seven years of plenty. But then, then there's going to be severe famine for seven years. Saints, the prophets have warned. The apostles have warned. People are laughing and scoffing at what has been said. And then you go into the grocery stores. You can't find full grocery aisles. You can't find children's medication. You can't find baby formula. Gas is astronomical. Nothing. Why? Because we have allowed the warning of the apostles and the prophets to be eaten up by the years. We have allowed the time to be eaten up by the years. When God is saying, it's a set time. I know we want to shout about being a set time for our, our favor to come, but there's also a set time for famine. Sakara, don't do it again. There's also a set time for famine. Just as well as there's a set time for a mountaintop experience, there's a set time for a valley experience, which is why I don't understand we give, why we give the enemy so much accolade and so much applause for doing a thing when God, the word says, that God has already set times and seasons in place. It's a set time. And this is the mystery of times and seasons that God wants to redeem the time for you and he wants to do it for his Lord. It's a set time. The only thing, I say two things, that everybody human has in common. One is time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Get off of that chair and move over there. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. And if we're not raptured out, we all have to go by way of the grave. Those are the two things you can bank on that we all have a time, the same 24 hours in a day. And except we be raptured out, we all got to go by way of the grave. This is the set time. This is the set time. But according to uh, Psalm 102 and 13, let me say it right. Because the enemy is legalistic, you know. 
He says, you will arise and have mercy. This is God to us. And have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. My God from Zion. Can anybody say, God, thank you for my set time? Thank you for my set time. Thank you, God, that the time for you to favor me is now. The time for you to redeem my time is now. The time for me to walk out everything that you have put on my journey called life is now. Now is the time for God to favor Zion. And thank you, God, that I'm a part of Zion. Thank you, God, that you have chosen this time to favor me. Thank you that in spite of everything else, in spite of what I haven't done, in spite of what I should have done, in spite of how I disregarded and disrespected who you are in my life and the call on my life, God, thank you that you will redeem the time and the set time to favor me is now. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Saints of God, don't forget to continue to prepare. To prepare for those things that are coming that you cannot see. Always remember that those fat cows were feeding beside the lean cows. And the fat cows never even knew that the lean cows were there. The lean cows stood there waiting their turn, patiently waiting their turn, because for every up swoop, there's always a downfall. For every mountaintop, <coughs> there's always a valley. And for every year of blessing, there's always some famine or a year of lack coming behind. Prepare for what you cannot see. Is God talking to anybody tonight? Is God speaking to anybody tonight concerning our set time? I thank God for who he is and what he's doing. Amen. Is God talking to anybody about our set time? The mystery of times and seasons is that God wants to reset us, not just the earth, but God wants to reset us. You 50, 55, 60 something, God wants to reset your time. God wants, is going to, will redeem your time. For you 40, 50, 60 something, God is redeeming. He's redeeming because he wants you to get the work done in the earth that he put on your journey called life. He wants you to redeem everything he wanted to give you in the earth realm. He doesn't want us just to get to heaven and to get those things. He wants us to rejoice and have those things now. Bless your name, God. He wants us to have it now. You go back. I said this last week. You go back and remind yourself where it is you want to be on your journey. I feel deliverance. Thank you, God. Where you want to be on your journey called life and you tell God, that's where I want to go back. God, set my time back to 28 years old. Set my time back to 32. God, set my time back to 37 because I didn't get it right with my kids, but I want to make it right. I want to do it again with my grandkids. I want to try it again with my great grand. God, I didn't get it right with my husband, but I want to try to get it. Give me a few, a few more years to get it right. This is redeeming the time. It's the mystery of time and season. Does anybody need anything redeemed? Amen. Anybody need anything redeemed? God, I need you to redeem the time. I need you to redeem the time. The years that I spent crying over stuff that I could not change, God redeemed the time. The years that I spent in that bad relationship and now my body is broken down, God redeemed the time. The years that I spent in the wrong ministry, being mistreated and mishandled, God redeemed the time. The years that I spent on a job 
being used and abused. God redeemed the time, the years that I spent depressed and wallowing in my own depression. God redeemed the time, the years that I was walking around looking like an old person when I was still young in my heart. God redeemed the time, when I, the years that I spent concerned about the opinion of other people. Lord, redeem the time, the years that I spent being sick in my body. God, redeem the time, the years that I spent being sick in my mind. God, redeem the time, the years that I spent wandering and questioning. If it were you, God, redeem the time, the years that I spent making the wrong decisions and wallowing in sin and calling it God. Lord, redeem the time. Woo! redeem the time. How can it be done? I heard somebody say that. Because God is a God who operates outside of time. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, tonight we love you. And we thank you for this lesson reminding us the mystery of times and seasons. Thank you, God, for giving us an opportunity to learn how to redeem the time. Thank you, God, for even offering to us that you will restore the year that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has eaten. Thank you, Jesus, that your word is still a promise and that you say that you keep watch over your word to perform that even until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we are the spoken word of God in the earth. Thank you that you are keeping your eye on us to perform everything you said concerning us, even until the day of Christ. Now, God, seal this word in our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit before the enemy can come and snatch it out. Make us a partaker of this word tonight, God. When we go back and listen to it, God, make us a partaker so that we might be able to redeem the time. And in that, God, we say we love you, we thank you, and we submit to your redemption of our time in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all so much for being a part of the live tonight, a part of what God is doing in the life of me and Holistic Chapin, Wagner, Irmo, and Worldwide. Thank you. Well, not thinking that robbery to come and eat from the table that God allows me to virtually prepare. My prayer is that you found something on the table that was just for you, not for your sister down the road, not for your mama in another state. But you sat at the table and you found that you were wanting. You found that you were lacking and that God had prepared this table just for you. Eat well, saints. Because God is, bless your name, Jesus. God is equipping his men and women of God of the fivefold to feed you well. He's preparing us to feed you so that you will be equipped for that which is to come. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My prayer for you is that the blessings of God will come from behind you and overtake you and all that concerns you the rest of your life in Jesus' name. It is so, and so it is. Amen. <laughs>